Hello everybody and a warm welcome to our next training session. Today we want to talk about rheology control. What is rheology? Why is it necessary to have it? And how do we apply it to our coating? Let's have a first peek into our program for this session. We start with an explanation about rheology. Then we have a look in two different types of products that we offer to the market, the Tego Visco Plus series and the Aeroseal products. And at the end, we bring it all together in a summary and we have some product recommendations. Let's start with rheology. What is it good for? To begin with such a topic, maybe it's a good idea to have a look to the definition. Rheology, the word, comes from the Greek word rheo, which means flow, and logi, which means the study of, is the study of a flow matter, which can be liquid or soft solid or even solid, under certain conditions to which it gives a response in flowing rather than deforming elastically. Viscosity is one key figure to rheology and must not be mixed up with rheology in general. So viscosity describes the flow behavior of the matter under certain circumstances. So for example, under certain shear conditions. Let's have a look to different kinds of rheological behavior of liquids. What you see in this graph is the viscosity applied over the shear force, starting from very low shear forces on the one end up to very high shear forces at the other end that are applied to the liquid by steering. The easiest way is if the shear force has no impact on the viscosity. This we call Newtonian behavior. You see the graph is parallel to the ground line so we have no influence by the shear force. We can adjust this viscosity to different levels by using the right additives, but it will always be a flat line. This graph shows the viscosity increasing with the shear force. We start with rather low viscosity when low shear forces are applied, and the viscosity rises very steeply when higher shear forces are applied. This happens, for example, in the automatic gearbox of your car. This effect is called shear thickening, dilatancy or rheopexy. The most important part is this one. This graph shows the viscosity which is very high at low shear forces applied and becomes thinner and thinner the material, so the viscosity decreases down to really low viscosities with very high shear forces applied. This effect is called shear thinning, pseudoplasticity, structural viscosity or tixotropy. Why this is so important to us we will show in the next graph. Why is it important to have such a pseudoplastic behavior in coatings? Here we have the full life cycle until a coating is applied. We have production, storage and application processes. During production, high shear forces are applied and this is good to have good wetting, a good uh, homogenization of the coating and the viscosity in this case is low. During transportation and storage, you want to prevent the settling of the solid content of the coating. Therefore, we need higher viscosity, and as no shear forces are applied, the viscosity is high. And we prevent the settling, like it's shown in, in this picture on the right side. If we want to complement the coating to add some tinting pastes, or to add a second component to the coating, then we need to lower the viscosity again. So we steer, we apply shear forces, therefore the viscosity will go down again. During application, it depends which application process we have. 
brushing and rolling will apply lower shear force to the coating than spraying will do, but this can be adjusted by using the right additive. And during drying processes, we want to prevent the sacking of the coating. We do not want to have the coating running down or even to have a shift within the coating. So to apply thicker layers, we need a high viscosity and again, as no shear forces are applied, the viscosity will be high in this stage. Here we show you how we measure the rheology. The coating is placed in a small receptacle into the rheometer and the steerer is applied. Then the steerer moves into the coating. It has only a small gap between the steerer and the receptacle of the coating. And then we start steering with very moderate speed. So the viscosity coming from a very high level goes down by increasing speed of the steerer because more shear forces are applied. It comes to a certain level where it is very low viscous and homogeneously viscous at the different speeds. The more visual effect is a jump curve. We start with high shear and then we stop the shear and all of a sudden the viscosity jumps to a certain level. And this happens when you apply a coating maybe by spraying and the droplet sticks on the substrate and remains there without new shear forces added. And so the viscosity of this droplet becomes very high all of a sudden and hinders the sacking of the coating. Let's come to one of our product groups, the Tego Visco Plus. Talking about thickening effects, we have to consider that there are different chemistries to do so. So here we have the non-associative thickening effect. The non-associative thickener is described by the screen lines that float between the other particles of the coating matrix, the pigments, the fillers in the binder matrix of the coating and hinder the free flow of these particles. So this gives the increased viscosity. The associative thickening effect has a different function. Associative thickeners, like you see here, consist of a chain of hydrophilic chemistry and two hydrophobic end groups. And with these end groups, they are able to connect to the fillers and to the emulsion particles and connect them together. And this gives the increased viscosity. Here's a chematic structure. Yeah, and you see the chain like hydrophilic groups and the two hydrophobic end groups that connect to the particles. Tego Visco Plus products are these kind of polyurethane associative thickeners. Now we come to our brand Aerosil for radiology control. Here we have to make a clear statement. While Wisco Plus is dominated by its chemistry, Aerosil is a particle. And with particles, you have not only the chemistry, but also the physics that influence the performance of the product. Aerosil is produced in a flame hydrolysis process. The schematic view you see here, a combustion flame consisting of hydrogen and oxygen is the basis. And then our raw material, silicon tetrachloride, is brought into this combustion flame. And then the primary particles occur really instantly. And then they form together, building agglomerates and aggregates. In the flame hydrolysis process, we can control the primary particle size, which is shown in the black curve, where the particles occur before they agglomerate and aggregate. 
this primary particle size is nearly homogeneous over the fo full residence time uh, of the particle staying in the flame. But with the residence time, the agglomeration increases from smaller aggregates up to bigger aggregates. And this starts also at the very beginning, like the red curve indicates, and the aggregates become bigger and bigger during time. The signaling model, which is behind aerosol, is that in liquids without aerosol, the small molecules can easily move from each other or next to each other. They have no internal friction or the internal friction is rather low. They have a similar consistency like water, these liquids, and though the viscosity of the full system is rather low. If we incorporate very small solids, just as a note here, like silica salts, this has no influence as these small solids have the same appearance in the system like the water molecules and they have no influence on the viscosity of the internal friction of the salt. So here you see these small particles moving easily next to each other. They do not connect to each other. The friction is low, the viscosity is low. If we add aerosol to a liquid, there are several factors that increase the viscosity or that lead to rheology control. The first is the surface that we bring in. A dry powder is brought into the coating. It has to be wetted. The surface has to be wetted. And the second is the aggregate structure that we have in the aerosols. The bigger structures can not that easily flow next to each other, like we have seen this before with very small particles. And the third, and also important, is the surface chemistry. These aggregates interact with each other, which is demonstrated by these arrows in between. Surface chemistry of aerosol can, in the easiest way, be the natural surface of a silica. The OH groups at the surface can interact with each other, like you see here on the very left side, by hydrogen bonding, or in the hydrophobic version of aerosol, we have replaced these OH groups by organic groups. And these organic groups render the aerosol hydrophobic and can interact with each other by van der Waals forces. Here are three types of surface chemistry for hydrophobic aerosols given. And all of these have different influence to the rheology of the coating. Talking about hydrophilic and hydrophobic aerosols, regularly the question occurs, what is better? And we cannot answer this question that easily. I give you an example. Think about having a sports car. Bright, red, 300 horsepower, four wheels, everything is there. And on the other hand, you have a tractor. Bright red, four wheels, 300 horsepower, everything is there. Which vehicle will win a race when they make a race worth each other? You cannot answer these questions until I tell you there will be two races. One will be on the highway and the other will be on the field. Now you have to think who will win the race. I give you 20 seconds for this. It's easy. The car will win the race on the highway and the tractor will win the race 
on the soft ground of the field. The car has no chance to bring its horse powers to the environment of the soft ground of the field and the big wheels of the tractor will have no benefit if the race is on solid ground of a street. And it's nearly the same with aerosols. It depends on the system to select the right aerosol. The equipment we use for these dispersing processes is displayed here. It's the lab equipment, but you also can consider that this is available in the production plant. So on the other side here, we have dissolver. Dissolver is a kind of steerer and only a few crates of our aerosol range will be fully dispersed with the dissolver. In general, we recommend the bead mill for dispersing processes of aerosol. Only here the shear forces are high enough to really break down the agglomerates of the aerosol. Here you see how the coating reacts on the dispersing over the time. On the very left you see the big particles, the agglomerates, in the macroscopical picture and these become smaller and less over the time. With 20 minutes, 40 minutes and already 60 minutes there are no particles to see anymore. They are smaller than our eye and uh, the microscopical picture can detect them. This table shows which parameters are influenced by the dispersing time. Let's go to the bottom of this table. The viscosity at lower and higher shear, it stays the same during the full dispersing time. We do not need the dispersing to develop the viscosity increase. Also the gloss is only improved a little bit from 84 to 89 gloss units over the dispersing time. An improve, but not tremendously. If you look at the grindometer, you see the clear effect. We break down the particles from 25 below 10 microns, which is our benchmark. But the really improvement what we see is the haze. So the scattering particles are taken out. They are destroyed. They are bro broken down to smaller particles so that they cannot scatter the light anymore. And we have a clearer picture in our coating. The haze comes down from 62 to down to below 10 units. The dosage level of aerosol in coatings is rather low. The general recommendation for solvent and waterborne is 1 to 2% on total. In high solids, it is even less. This is due to the fact that due to the higher solid content, the viscosity is already higher, the surface that has to be wetted is already incorporated into the coating by the fillers and the pigments. We do not go into details for powder coatings because their aerosol is used as a free flow agent and does not work as a rheology control agent. The effect that we want to perform with aerosol in coatings is on the one hand the anti-sacking and it is shown here in a clear coated system you can apply really thick films without sacking effects when you use aerosol in the right amount and with the right type of aerosol. The stabilization of pigments during the storage is given here would you disperse the pigments and to hinder the flocculation aerosol is moving in between these gaps and hinders the pigments to reflocculate to build hard aggregates again. And this can be described with the jetness factor that means without aerosol the jetness of the coating is lower due to the reflocculating effect than with aerosol. 
And this is shown in this graph here. Last but not least, we come to the summary and the product recommendations. To describe the general benefits between Tego Visco Plus and Aerosil, we have to look what it is used for. Tego Visco Plus is used for water-based systems, while Aerosil can be used for solvent and water-based systems. The benefit of Tego Visco Plus it is easy to incorporate as it is a liquid and it can be easily added to water-based systems. It provides rheology control from Newtonian to pseudoplastic behavior and the low impact on gloss and the excellent compatibility to tinting systems is also a benefit of Visco Plus. Aerosil, on the other hand, shows the fastest recovery of the viscosity. Think of the jump curve that I have showed to you and the highest viscosity increase that is possible. It has a very low dosage level and consists of 100% matter. Additional effects can be applied with aerosol as well, but this is a different story that will be discussed in a different session. This video visualizes all the effects and benefits that we have spoken about. You see the two receptacles with and without aerosol, and while the material is agitated, the particles move around, and once the steerer is stopped, the particles without aerosol settle to the ground, while the matrix with aerosol is fortunate enough to hold the particles in place. In the application, you can see the sacking effect and the aerosol equipped material without sacking. Here are some product recommendations and the business cards for these products. Let's start with Tego Visco Plus 3000, an associative polyurethane thickener appearing as a clear to hazy liquid. It's a dilution with 25% active matter and it provides a Newtonian flow behavior. Therefore, the anti-settling and anti-sacking properties are rather limited, but it's very well compatible to water-based systems. The Tego Visco Plus 3060 is also an associative polyurethane thickener, a clear to hazy liquid, but it creates a pseudoplastic flow behavior. It, as a liquid, it is easy to incorporate and it's for pigmented and clear coating systems. It provides good anti-settling and anti-sacking properties and is well recommended and highly applicable for water-based systems. On the aerosil products, we have here the aerosil 200 a hydrophilic fumed silica, and this is the hydrophilic market standard, especially used for unsaturated polyester resins, laminating resins or gel coats. It can be applied in water-based and solvent-based systems and provides a specific surface area around 200 square meters. Aerosil R 972 is our hydrophobic fumed silica market standard. It has good dispersibility. It can be used for water-based and solvent-based systems. And its after treatment is done with D-methyl dichlorosilane. It provides a rather low specific surface area around 120 square meters per gram and provides optimum anti-settling, anti-sacking properties for water-based and solvent-based systems. 
some kind of a siblings product to R972 is Aerosil R974. It has a higher specific surface area, but the after treatment with D-methyl dichlorosilane is the same. It is universally applicable, sufficient dispersible for water-based and solvent-based systems. So everything is nearly the same like R972, but R974 finds its market more in the Americas and R972 more in Europe and Asia. Aerosil R812 is a highly hydrophobic fumed silica. It has high efficiency, high transparency, and therefore it's especially recommended for automotive clear coat applications. The after treatment with hexamethyl diesel isane provides these highly hydrophobic appearance of the material. Due to this, it's not recommended for water-based systems, but more for solvent-based systems. It provides good anti-settling and anti-sagging properties and has a very high specific surface area of 270 square meters per gram in average. Finally, I'd like to thank you for your attention. I hope you have understood something more about rheology control and you have learned something about our products. If there are any questions occurring to you, do not hesitate to contact our AT team. Thank you very much and see you in the next session. What do we sell to our customer? The optimum rheology control for each coating system.